Are you looking to harness the power of iterative data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric? I can help you with that by teaching you all you need to know about the for each activity. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Microsoft Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Microsoft Fabric Data Engineering and in this video we are going to cover the for each activity in Microsoft Fabric Data Pipelines. This video is also part of my Microsoft Fabric Data Engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. And also it is good to keep in mind that these videos built on top of the previous videos. So before watching this video you should be at least familiar with expressions and parameters that I have already covered in the previous videos. But now let's talk about the for each activity that is one of the most powerful activities to learn in Microsoft Fabric Data Pipelines since it will allow you to add some iterative logic to your pipelines. That will make your pipelines way more efficient and faster to develop. In this video I first cover how the for each activity works on conceptual level and then we will have a demo slash tutorial where I show how it works in action. But now let's get started. First let's imagine a situation that we have a CSV file in our lake house and we would like to copy this file to a lake house table. In Fabric we have multiple ways of achieving this goal, but using data pipelines is one of the easiest way of achieving this goal and building this kind of pipeline is a really simple task and one copy activity in a pipeline should be enough to handle this case. But what if instead of one file we would have 20 files that we would like to copy to 20 different tables. This would mean that we would need to add 20 copy activities and configure them separately that is already a quite time consuming and makes our pipeline a lot more complex. This is the stage when for each activity steps into picture, since we can just wrap the copy data activity to a for each activity and then iterate over it 20 times, thus reducing the number of activities from 20 to just 2. Now let's take a closer look at how for each activity works and here we can see how does the for each activity look in the data pipeline UI. For each activity is an activity that takes in an array of items. For example, a simple array of string items could just contain two strings. These arrays can be also way more complex like arrays of objects with multiple layers that will allow you to build very powerful configuration based logic to your pipelines. For each activity is an activity that wraps other activities, meaning that activities can be added inside the for each activity with some limitations. In this sense, for each resembles quite a lot of the if condition activity that we covered in the previous video. When the for each activity executes, it will run all the activities for every item in the list. Now let's go through how this iterative logic works. Here we have our for each activity. Inside that activity we have another activity that we would like to execute as part of our for each logic. Then we have our array of items. In this case we have three items that we are going to pass down to our for each activity. The values in this array could be any data type that are supported in data pipelines. So basically we could have an array of strings or maybe an array of integers or in some cases we could even have an array of objects that we could pass down to the for each activity. In this case I'm just representing the items as item 1, item 2 and item 3 to simplify this example. Inside these activities in the for each activity we are going to reference these items with the reference at item. This will fetch the current item in the loop from the list of items that we are running in the for each activity. So during the first execution of the for each activity this item reference will fetch item 1 from our array and use the value in our activities. After we have executed all the activities in the for each activity we start over. Now we have again the item reference but since this is an iteration number 2 we are now going to fetch the item 2 from our list using the at item reference. After our second iteration is done we have the third iteration and then we are going to again use the at item reference and fetch the item 3 from our list. This is the last iteration so after we are done executing all the activities for this iteration we are ready to continue forward from the for each activity. 
Next, let's digest this for each notation a bit more and use a bit more complex array that has two objects inside it as an example. In those objects we have two properties, src file and dst table. Then we can imagine that we are passing this array to our for each loop in which we would then refer those objects in the dynamic content of our activities. If we would like to refer those two objects we would use the at item reference. In the first iteration of our for each, that item would be replaced with our first object, and then in our second iteration, it would be replaced with our second object, and so on, if we would have more objects in our array. Then what if we would like to refer these properties inside of our objects? For referencing src file property, we would use .src file after our at item, which would then get the value stored in our src file that would be file 1 for the first iteration and file 2 in the second iteration. Same logic applies to our second property dst table and it would be referred by using .dst table after our at item. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do a quick demo slash tutorial together so we can see how the for each works in action. Also, all the files that I will be using in the tutorial can be found by clicking the link in the description. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Maxed Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now, let's go to Fabric. First, we can go and take a look at my lake house, where I have created a new folder called Fabric DE Series 9 Source. In this folder, I have two CSV files, animalsfile.csv and moviesfiles.csv. In both of these files, I have a header and few rows of data. Our goal in this tutorial would be to copy these files from our file section into tables in our lake house, so that the data in animals files would go to animals tables and the data in movies files would go to movies table. Also, since this is a for each tutorial, we don't want to use two individual copy activities to achieve this task. Instead, we are going to use the for each activity and one copy activity to achieve this goal. Let's navigate to create and let's select data pipeline and name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we would like to start by adding just one activity to our blank canvas and this time this activity is going to be for each activity. Before we start the actual configuration, let me quickly explain the different settings in the settings tab of our for each activity. The first setting here is the sequential setting and by clicking this active our for each would execute iterations in sequential manner, meaning one by one. You can also see that our second setting disappears if we click the sequential setting as active, since our second setting controls how many parallel executions our for each could be doing at the same time if we are not running it in the sequential mode. To our last setting, we would configure the array we would like to loop through in our for each activity. Now let's start the actual pipeline development work. First, let's click somewhere to the blank canvas so that we can see the parameters tab. And let's create a new parameter called file array to our pipeline. And let's change the type of this parameter to array since this is the data type that our for each activity is expecting. To the value field as a default value, I'm going to add an array of objects. In this array of objects, we have two objects, so one object for each file. Both of these objects have the same properties, source file and destination table. The value for those properties in each object differ and the first object, object has the values for our animals file and the second for our movies file. Next, let's configure our for each by first naming it to for each file in file array so that it describes what our for each does. Then we want to go to settings tab and add dynamic content to our item settings. Here we want to use our file array parameter so we can select it. Next we can add one copy activity to inside our for each loop. Let's name our copy activity to copy data from files to tables. Then we can proceed to our source configuration and select our lake house and use the files as our root folder. Then to the directory we can type our lake house folder name 
that in my case was Fabric D Series 9 source. To the file name we want to add some dynamic content since the file name is coming from our array that we are iterating in this loop. We can see that now we have this for each iterator tab here that we have this current item available. We can click it which will then just add this at item reference to our expression. However, if you remember from our previous section, this will now refer to the object in our array and now we would like to use the source file property here. So we need to add that dot source file reference here using that object notation. Now this expression would point to that source file property in our object, then we can click OK. Then we want to change the file format from binary to delimited text and click preview data to see that we have configured everything correctly for our source. When clicking this preview data, we have to provide the value for our expression so that Fabric will know which file we are trying to preview. We can write here movies underscore file dot CSV, which will then start to load up preview that would take a little while to load up. Now our preview is done and we can see that the data looks good, so we can move into configuring our destination. Here we want to select our lake house again as our destination. This time root folder is going to be tables and now we want to add some dynamic content to our table name. This will happen in very similar manner that it happened for our source, but now instead of source file, we are going to refer to destination table property of our object. Also, we can go to the advanced settings and change our table action from append to overwrite, so that we will always overwrite the table with new data when we run this pipeline. And now we have configured everything and we can run our pipeline, which will then prompt us to give a value for our parameter. But since our default value is fine, we can just click OK and go with that. Now our pipeline starts to run, which will take a little moment. As we can see from the execution, we have two copy activities executing at the same time, since we are running our for each in parallel and not sequential mode. We can also check from our inputs of our copy activities that what kind of values went to those dynamic fields. But now our pipeline has executed and we can check out our lake house. In our lake house we can see those two tables and we can preview the data in those tables and it looks good. So it seems that everything went as we wanted. Now let's go back to our pipeline since I want to tell you about one key limitation with for each activity. And this limitation is that we cannot add another for each activity inside another for each activity. The workaround for this case would be to add invoke pipeline activity inside this for each activity and then invoke a pipeline that would have a for each activity inside it. But this would get pretty complex pretty fast and I would really start to look at other tools in Fabric to achieve this complex logic, like for instance notebooks. Now you should have the basic idea how the for each activity works in most Fabric data pipelines. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.